So, um, so, so with that, um, what we are going to do is uh, we'll actually just segue into our, our next segment at this point, yeah, um, sure. and which is the Debonair Ideal. And this is brought to you by uh, Debonair House, makers of the Debonair Cigars and the Indian Motorcycle Ultra Premium Cigars. Uh, for folks who missed it, Phil Zengi, the, uh, Mr. Debonair himself, he was just on Cigar Chat uh, before this show. I want to thank the guys from Cigar Chat. They gave a nice plug to us. Uh, well, Logan didn't, but <laughs> Logan was nice. <laughs> Logan's mad at Aaron, but that's another. Er, everyone's mad at Aaron, right? But uh, no, it was uh, so, yeah. So check out uh, Phil's interview uh, with the Cigar Chat guys. It was a great interview. We're gonna be definitely. Ha I, I think we're gonna get. We're gonna have Phil on. I think before IPCPR, I got to work on that with him. Uh, incredible supporter of us, and this is a segment um, called the Debonair Ideal segment. And what we do here is it's kind of a little bit of a break from the show. And the idea with the Debonair Ideal is we connect, you know, cigars, everyone's heard it. You, they connect conversations in the cigar lounge. Uh, they're conduits with things, whether we pair things with cigars or whether we just are in a cigar lounge talking about topics. And I'm going to be 50 years old this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm going to be 50. And for folks who know me, I live in the past. Uh, I, I'm very enamored with um, retro. Um, a guy who late seventies, early eighties subculture. If I ever did another podcast, it would probably be on that because, um, I grew up in New York in 1977 in the blackout 10 years old. It's still the, probably the, the most, uh, dynamic year of my life. So when, when I, when retro comes up, it, it's something that we talk about when you have a bunch of 40 something or early 50 guys in a cigar lounge, these topics come up in conversation. And you actually inspired this segment, Danny Vasquez. <laughs> so over the weekend, I guess you put up – for folks that don't follow Danny on social media, you got to follow him right on Facebook, right? He's got great stuff. He puts a picture up of this candy called Bigly Chew. Best. Right? Bigly Chew was this gum. It was in a um, – like a, a pouch, like chewing tobacco pouch. Right. Right? Is it still around? Yeah, I actually got that at a, a store called Five Below. Uh, oh wow! Did they did they ask? But yeah, I mean, imagine. Yeah, I'm just thinking today it's like taboo. Like I didn't think it was still around, but this stuff was like awesome. I remember I'd get a pouch of this stuff and I'd have it, and um, it was like I said, it was like shredded gum almost. It was. Yeah, and they put, made it look just like just like chewing tobacco for baseball players and stuff, but it was for. For kids, <laughs> right, right. I, I'm just thinking if my if well, my kids are older, but if they would have taken that to school, they probably would have got suspended now, right? Probably not just having yeah. gum, like chewing gum and something that looks like tobacco. Mm -hmm. So I looked at that and I was like, man, that's a good idea for the debonair ideal segment. And in terms of some things that we um we you know we we were maybe remember when we were younger, and um. We'll kind of, I guess we'll kind of alternate on this. I'll kind of, you had some really, I looked at the notes we did and you had some great, you have some great ones in here. But the one I start <laughs> off with, the one I'm going to start with is it's something that's, for, were you, I don't ask, were you, do you remember the bicentennial or was that before your time? Before my time. Yeah, I was born in 1980, so I'm 36. Oh my goodness. See, now I feel old. <laughs> so you have to, you have to, re the bicentennial, and, and it's amazing because I have four kids and they, they don't know. The, the bicentennial was, was the 200th anniversary of the country, obviously. It was a big, big deal. And everything was bicentennial branded that particular year. I mean, it was, there were, they remember they had made special quarters that year. Um, a lot of products just had bicentennial branding on it. Um, there were a lot of bicentennial theme shows, specials on TV. Um, you name it. I mean, it was that was a big deal. It's kind of forgotten about today, unfortunately. Uh, but that was like, you know, I was in third grade when the bicentennial and the night of the 4th of July, I was sick as a dog and, and couldn't do it. I, I was home watching TV with, and it, it didn't really bother me now. Now it really bothers me, you know, kind of going back to that. <laughs> but, but yeah, the bicentennial was a, was a, was I said, it was a, everyone had, um, uncle Sam hats. Like I wanted an uncle Sam hat. Right. Uh, or, or Yankee doodle dandy, a Yankee doodle, like revolutionary hat. I remember getting, like I had to get one or we, we, we were allowed to wear those to school, which was really cool. They would, yeah, no one would, would argue about, you could wear those to class and everything. Uh, so I was, like I said, that was something I miss. Uh, 
you guys who are younger just I don't think you appreciate that as much, but it was just something on my mind there. How about you? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish your thought. Oh, no, no. What I, yeah, I was thinking it's funny how when I saw your notes for that, I was like, man, you know, we're coming up on the 250th. Um, I, I, may I may not make it. I may not make it. Me neither, man. The way I'm going. But yeah. um, uh, I can't. I hope I hope it's that exciting. I hope it's that uh, crazy. And I hope America, like, just kind of embraces, you know, as being one of the youngest countries in, you know, in the world right now, it's, it'd be really neat to to see a countrywide, nationwide uh, celebration of 250 years. Man. That'd be uh, for the for three six three hundred sixty five days. Oh yeah, yeah. Nine. It's nine years. Two thousand twenty six. And, and you know, I'll make one other point. In my opinion, the bicentennial was the first time this big commercialization of something took. Like, you know, I think people may remember the millennium change. Right. That's probably the most analogous thing I could say about that. Is like you know, everything was everything was branded two thousand. Yeah back then you know it was everything was banned in 1976 bicentennial 200 back then so it, that's probably the closest thing i can remember to the bicentennial was the millennium change yeah that's true yeah y2k and everybody was going crazy yep yep exactly so, i was in it yep yep same thing <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um obviously being born in the 80s i have you know um uh, a different time um different times growing up uh but what's funny i was the youngest of four and I was like really good. Uh, I, I was really close to my, my oldest brother. He would take me kind of everywhere, which is 12, 12 years old than me. Um, so I was exposed to, you know, just kind of older things quicker. But um, for me, TV back then was, was, was awesome. For Gold, whatever reason, golden, age. Know, golden age in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, we didn't have a ton of money growing up, but for whatever reason, we always had cable. So, um, you know, my list of, of shows, I remember in the summer, I, I would, I had my schedule down and it was like Knight Rider in the morning and then. Oh, yeah. Kit. Chips. Yeah. And then, yeah. David Hasselhoff in the car. Like, who didn't want that car? Oh, um, my goodness. Yeah. With the turbo boost and he could fly over things, which, you know, if you look at, yeah. if you look back into it now, it's ridiculous, but it's, it's it was just epic TV. Right. But with Chips, which, you know, um, Eric Estrada. Um, and, and then I used to watch, you know, the Bob Barker days of, of, uh, Price is Right. Um, I used to love that stuff. Um, and that's kind of what I, you know, I don't watch a ton of TV now unless it's, you know, I'll take a day and binge, binge watch certain shows. Um, right. But as opposed to, you know, as, as far as watching TV every day, you know, that's, that's not what I do. Um, but I, I just miss those days, man. It was, it was just great. Um, and, and Nickelodeon for me was, was a big thing, um, as a kid. Um, and I think one of the notes here I had was like, was, was double dare. And I remember like any kid would have given his right arm to be on that show with his family and just make oh. a complete fool of themselves. Um, so those are, you know, kind of some of the things I miss from, from, you know, back, back in the day. Cause right now everything's like reality shows. Right. Yeah. They were, these were, I, I agree. You know, you mentioned, you know, I mentioned going back again to the 70s. Um, I'll never forget. It was a Wednesday night in July 1977. And we watched, we would watch Beretta, which was the <laughs> Robert Blake cop show. Yeah. Uh, you know, Robert Blake obviously had his problems later on, but it was, it was my mom and dad's favorite show. Well, why, and I'd, I'd watch Beretta. I was up. It was the summer. They had a rerun on and the power goes out. <laughs> and my dad just starts cursing, right? Because he had missed this previous. They were running reruns of Beretta at this point, right? So he had right. missed that one already. And he's cursing, and he's like, well, hey. "And Con Edison was the electrical company that he's blah blah." blah. He's complete four letter words, and uh, so he goes downstairs. We live in an apartment building. He goes downstairs, and everyone's out downstairs, and that's when it was the big blackout in 1977. That was what happened in the middle of Beretta. It turned out wow. that yeah, so it didn't come back on that night. <laughs> <laughs> he was still mad at the cable company for whatever. Reason. Oh, he's still yeah, he's still mad at me. Yeah, <laughs> he's still mad. Like there were That's two things so with my dad. Uh, if the if the TV or the air conditioner went out, yeah, he didn't want to be around him. Oh yeah, especially yeah. back then. I mean, it was. I mean, it wasn't probably wasn't central air, right? You were in New York. So we had yeah, we had we were in an apartment building. We had the you know the the Fetters air conditioners in the windows. Oh, I couldn't. Imagine. So, so you could yeah. open the window. Yeah, we we could open our window because you need the air. So you had to run your air basically to do that because we had like, three windows in the apartment, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, 
Uh, you meant uh, actually the other one was Archie Bunker, obviously, um, and you know All in the Family. So yeah, I used to watch that show. I did love that show. That oh, was, I uh, mean, there's there's an episode of All in the Family. I talked about this, I believe, on Smooth Drawers, the radio show on Saturdays, where Archie and Meathead have this bet, and the bet is <laughs> Meathead can't give up eating, and Archie can't give up cigars. If you people need to watch that episode, this is a 1970s episode. It is so prophetic of what was going to happen with smoking bans, restrictions, false health. You got to just watch this because it was almost prophetic, that episode That's of what so would funny. happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Full. It's my favorite episode of, of All in the Family still to this day. And yeah, it just happens to tie in with cigars too, which is pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, he, was, yeah, he was amazing. Um, one of my other things on the list was, were the toys back in the day. You know, I have kids now and I see the toys that kind of come out and I just one, I can't believe how much Legos cost now. Have oh you, my goodness! Yeah. So one thing, I, I thank God I have girls for now because they're not really into uh, Legos much. But they're seventy, eighty, ninety, over a hundred dollars for a set of Legos. So whatever. But for me, I remember, and the, my number one on the list was Micro Machines, which I, I was a little older when they came out, but I do remember right. them. Yeah. Which now, if you have, and you don't have little kids, but there's there's an, a product called Shopkins right now that my, my six-year-old is absolutely ridiculously nuts right. about. And they're just like little figurines of food and appliances and clothes and whatever. And you just collect, you collect them. It's funny how that reminded me of Micro Machines, which were little, just little cars. And I just remember seeing them and just like, this is what I, I wanted as many of them as I could. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, thinking back to like, I always had big league chewed on me and, um, and, and kind of just tying that all back into, to the toys and, and all that. And I remember collecting baseball cards and football, uh, basketball cards and stuff back then as well. And, um, something I, I, I kind of, I kind of missed that too. Yeah. I, uh, same thing with me. Uh, you know, the, the one I remember with the toys were the star Wars figures mm-hmm. and, uh, this is probably, again, because you were probably very young, but when uh, Empire Strikes Back came out, that's the movie where they freeze Han Solo. Right. So what I used to do is the, back when they sold margarine, right? You don't see – the margarine was in those little round tubs. I'd, right. I'd get the empty margarine cups. I'd, t- I'd put water in it, put Han Solo in it, and freeze them. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That, if, you, that, if, if you only knew what that stuff would be worth today, huh? I know. I still ha- no, I still have them. I actually oh, still yeah. have, but I probably ruined a couple of hand solos in the process with that. But yeah, I actually do have them still oh, uh, nice. because I went through three boys who went through the second generation of Star Wars. Right. Uh, uh, you know, so that was the the prequel movie. So they, you know, they kind of it's kind of interesting. We've been able to make a connection with that as well. Uh, I got an interesting comments in the chat room uh bob dog this is a great uh he says always great to see you danny he goes we used to wrap big league chew around our big chief chewing tobacco <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, funny yeah, yeah. Man, it makes sense bob bob is a funny guy yeah it, and now that we're bringing him up i want to say thanks to bob has been following me and my company since pretty much day one before i had a product before really anything on twitter and, and instagram it's cool that he's kind of chiming in. He's all over the social uh, cigar social media stuff. He's he's been a great supporter of, of various uh, you know the, back when I was on Stogie Geeks to uh, now Smooth Drawers and this show. Uh, he's a great guy as well. Um, you know, it, it, you know another candy I forgot to mention this candy is uh, you remember Pop Rocks? Oh yeah. You take Absolutely. the Pop Rock, you put well, and you put them on the tongue. They pop. They had another thing called Space Dust. And it was very similar to uh, Pop Rocks, but it was like a powder. And you take the powder as the space dust and you put it on your tongue. And it, it, it didn't quite pop, but it kind of sizzled on your mouth. Right. Right. I used to love that stuff. Yeah, but, it, but Pop Rocks kind of came out around the same time, and Pop Rocks kind of knocked out space dust. So, Well, I remember, I remember hearing about space dust, and I, and I looked it up, and it was funny how – they they thought people it was because of dust and angel dust like they yep, yep I forgot about that you just yeah it's right it went off the uh, it kind of went off, yeah it went away like it was encouraging kids to do drugs and stuff like that, that was the beginning of the nanny state right there with space dust yeah 
Thanks, Bezos. <laughs> yeah, thanks, but yeah, that, that is good. Um, and then just kind of, uh, you know, circling back um, as well, you mentioned the, you have one more show on here, Love Connection. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I, so I, when Love Connection came out, I was—I think I was in college by then. Yeah. Um, I gotta tell folks if 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 you've ever remember the show In Living Color, of course, Jim Carrey would do Chuck Woolery, yeah, and he, and he would do a Love Connection. I mean, those Love Connections that he nails Chuck Woolery, <laughs> and there's one where he has on Mike Tyson and Robin Givens that. <laughs> You will ju- like they have the guy used to do Mike Tyson on there was was awesome and it's it's basically Mike Tyson and Robin Givens telling about that date. Folks, look that up on YouTube. It is it is absolutely a a must um a must uh, see. Yeah, I remember that. I, and it it was probably a bit too mature for me at the time, but I I remember just always watching that show. I, I loved it that show. Um, but yeah, and then uh, in Living Color, man, and I should have put that on here. Yeah, that was. Uh- that was great. Yeah, and then uh, Crook mentions Homie the Clown on, uh, yeah, as well. Oh, yeah. Hell, Hol- homie, the- homie, don't play that. <laughs> homie, don't play that. I still watch Homie the Clown. <laughs> uh, <it's- laughs> if you look at the, how many people were on that show, I think it I think it went off the air because how successful it was. It was. Like, it- the Waynes Brothers, of course. Jim Carrey, of course. Uh, even, like, J-Lo was a dancer. Rosie Perez was the choreographer. I mean, they just had – cast of at the time no names that just became you know all hit stardom at some point yep no exactly i agree i agree so again um this uh, will wrap up the uh, debonair ideal segment uh for this week danny that was a pretty cool conversation I, I think we're going to do more of these retro segments out uh over some more weeks as well so i think it was uh, you inspired this segment um <laughs> so if i get aaron on board with it it'll be cool but you know we'll do it from time to time but uh, what I'd like to do is just take a uh, a little uh, 